In this show, you can join in the action from home. Download the Poker Play Along app from your app provider. Seven finalists are looking to capture their first golden trophy. Four of them already have a bronze medal finish. I feel great making the final table. It's such a fun tournament. It's the first year that it was here, I came in third and going for the win today. I've never won an official title, but I've gotten so close in so many tournaments. So it would mean a lot for me to just win this outright and have all the chips at the end. I think the difference in these high buy-in events to a main event is that most players are really comfortable putting their stack at risk and they're not too scared. I got the main event. I'd like to win one of these high rollers also. I don't really care too much about the money, it's just about playing against the best players and testing myself. A high stakes cash specialist, EPT regular, and millionaire tycoon make up this magnificent seven. Millions of dollars are at stake in the premier poker event of the new year. PCA 2015 Super High Roller. Final table. Welcome to the Bahamas and the PCA, the first major poker festival of 2015, with 35 events over nine days. And the opening act is more like a headliner. This record-breaking super high roller had 66 total entries at 100 grand a pop, creating a prize pool of more than $6.4 million. Well, we're down to the final table, the final seven, and the remaining players are all in the money. They're now competing for the first major title of the year and a top prize of nearly 1.9 million. This final table stacked. There's no super easy spots. And the toughest spots will be the players with the most experience at Super High Roller final tables. It's my third final table in a high buy-in event. I've never won a live tournament in my life. It would be really cool to win it and celebrate with friends. This is a few times I've made it deep in this tournament. The biggest threat at the table, obviously, is Sorrel because he's chip leader, but he's going to be tiptoeing his way around because he knows I'm very dangerous. I have a great position on the table. I have Bryn to my right, who has a decent amount of chips, and he's quite an aggressive player. I have a really good feel about how everyone plays. I'm kind of a little bit ahead of the middle of the pack, which is a good place to be. You can just kind of sit back, let the chip leader do all the work, just hope to move up some payout jumps, and then have things go well for you when you get shorthanded. If I could go heads up against anybody, it would be Sam Greenwood, just because uh, he's my roommate here at the PCA, and that would be a fun story. If Sam gets a hold of some chips, it'll be very, very difficult to play against. Oh yeah, I'm at the final table of a super high roller, so I'd say I'm super happy. Andrew Robles, a world-class player, of course, and he's going to be someone I'm going to have to keep an eye on. But there's no one there I can take lightly. For the 11th consecutive year, we've come to the Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island for the PokerStars.com PCA. And the final table of the first event features six pros and one amateur. One of those pros, Sorel Mitzi, is the chip leader, sandwiched between two of the shorter stacks, but no one has fewer than 20 big blinds, so no one is in the danger zone. Danger zone! Blinds, 30,000, 60,000 with a 10,000 ante as they compete for that prestigious trophy and a seven-figure score. You know, I think Victor Blanc must have left his trophy here in the Bahamas because I saw one of the groundskeepers driving around with one of them as a golf cart hood ornament. Action is now underway, and this hand features your first chance to play along at home. Yes! It's been folded around to Andrew Robel. He passes. Sorel Mitzi, the chip leader, on the button, king 10 off. Sorel's got all the chips, he's got position, and he's got a very playable hand. The two players in the blinds don't have that many chips. Sorrell elects to just call. Ah, the old limp the button strategy. I think he does this so he can call a raise in position and not have to play a monster pot. Fogelsang completes with ace-three suited in the small blind. Greenwood checks his option with eight-six off in the big. Well, that's top pair for Fogelsang. He's way ahead here. 
Vogel Saints gotten a cheap look at this flop, but to be honest, he was probably going to call an outflop Sorrell anyway. Action checked around. The turn card is a queen. So Mitzi picks up a straight draw. Vogel Sang is still a 9 to 1 favorite. Oh, and Sam Greenwood's drawing dead. For the second time, it's been checked to Mitzi. And once again, he checks behind. And he rivers Broadway. No oh, man, he got there. He got there like a pretty girl gets to the airport, late and to the detriment of those around her. He actually has a six card straight, but this ain't pie gal, so it counts for nothing. Well, it still counts for a regular straight. He value bets 180,000, and it's decision time for Vogelsang. What could Sorrell possibly be betting for value that Kristoff is beating? Nothing. The answer is nothing. He could be bluffing. But come on. No. Come on. The German folds. That is actually a really good fold. Greenwood passes as well. Sorel Mitzi wins the pot and extends his chip lead. He's up to 4.7 million. I think you're at like King 10 or Queen Jack. I don't know. Nah, you got me. Well, these seven players have locked up nearly 314 grand, more than a million for the top two, with the better part of two million for the eventual champ. And that's a lot of dim. Andrew Robel, Queen Jack suited under the gun. He raises to 140k. Robocop, I haven't done commentary on this guy since the big game. Mostly a cash game player. Apparently plays cash so high, it has to have an emergency exit row. I'll be here all week. Folded around to Roger Seppel, who is a computer software entrepreneur. Think it's fair to say he's worth a few quid. Robel, Sippel, Sippel, Robel. I'd like to buy a vowel pad, am I right? Sippel calls with King Jack of Clubs. Bryn Kenny in the big blind with Ace Eight of Clubs. Sippel, Robel, Kennel. Can you guys change the graphic just for this hand to. Come on. Kenny calls as well. We're going three way to the flop. While it's top pair for Robel, flush draws for both Sippel and Kenny. Oh man, am I the only one rooting for a car crash here? I don't even care who wins, just as long as someone loses. Action check to the pre-flop aggressor. Gotta bet top pair, right? Right. I'd say he makes this about 250,000. Well, that's actually 210,000. I'd say he makes this about 210,000. Sipple, with his no good flush draw. Calls. Bryn Kenny, getting a great price with the nut flush draw. He calls as well, still three way as we go to the turn. Kind of surprised he didn't raise. Five of hearts sees Robel become a 68% favorite. That's a boring card. Simple checks. How much is that, 800? Well, this is an interesting spot for Kenny. Robles got 840K. There's more than 1.1 million in the middle. Thanks. Looks like Bryn's gonna lead. He bets 635,000. That's about three quarters of Robles' stack. I don't think Andrew's ever folding here. Bryn's probably not going to lead with two pair or better. Robel raises all in for the rest of it. Sipple folds. Kenny calls. Has to call. So Robel almost a three to one favorite here to double up. Just has to fade an ace or a club on the river. If Bryn got it in on the flop, I think Sipple comes along for the ride. The river is a club. Goodbye, Robel. Cheers. I had King Jack at clubs. He, you might have called if uh, he folded just to see the river. And then... No, I feel bad I called for the car crash. Robel out in seventh, cashing for $313,700. If he bets 300 grand and Andrew folds, I'm calling. But the bet was too big. I'm not going to. Roger, what did you have? King Jack, the clubs. Oh, wow. Wow. 
I almost got totally cooler. <laughs> Listen, and you can hear the sound of Andrew Robel not laughing. So six remain in this 100K super high roller event. Actions on Steve O'Dwyer. Eight ten off. He folds. Roger Sipple is out. Bren Kenny passes. Sorel Mitzi, the chip leader, has ace nine. And all the position. He raises the button. 135,000. Nines for Vogelsang in the small blind. What's Vogie going to do here? Get it in? Quite possible. Well, that is just a call. Sam Greenwood in the big blind has sixes. He's the table short stack with around 20 bigs. All in. He shoves. And this is probably what Christoph wanted. How much is it? 1.26. Oh, why are you even asking that, Sorel? Good show. He folds. I call. And Vogel Sang puts Greenwood at risk. More like sad Greenwood. Nine flopped in my sets. This isn't good. It's science. He doesn't need to flop a set. He's already a four to one favorite. A bigger favorite now. Not much for you there, Sam. Greenwood still has two outs. He needs a six on the river to survive. It's a king. Greenwood out in sixth. Good game, Sam. Cashing for nearly 400k. Good game, Sam. Nice playing with you, man. Good game, bro. Good game. Nice playing with you. Okay, nice playing with you. So, we're already down to the final five here in the Caribbean. Don't forget you can join in the action from home. Make sure you download the Poker Play Along app. Here at Atlantis in the Bahamas, it's the final table of the PokerStars.com PCA Super High Roller. Of the five remaining players, four have gone deep in big buy-in events before. Bryn Kenny finishes in third place in the Super High Roller event at the PCA. Mitzi exits in third for 679,000 euros. Steve O'Dwyer busts in third. Well, Steve-O, you can't win them all. Vogel Sang exits in third. An amazing result when you consider this is only his second live tournament. They're all eager to upgrade their third place finishes and take home the trophy, plus nearly $1.9 million. Together they have four thirds, which is technically one and one third. Math jokes. Yeah. Lines are up to 40-80, and this next hand has more play along a poke of fun. Action's been folded to businessman Roger Sippel. How do you see there, Roger? Come on there, Roger. What, I'm trying to sportify poker. This looks like a raise from the cutoff with Ace King. 210,000. It's Christoph Vogelsang's big blind, and he's got Queen Ten of Hearts. He defends. Heads up to the flop. Which sees Vogel saying flop a flush. Meanwhile, Sipple has a draw to the nut flush slash straight flush. Man, I really haven't learned my lesson because now I am rooting for another car crash already. Action's been checked to Sipple. You'd expect he'd continue here most of the time. Ace King would often be the best hand, and he usually is going to have the best draw. It's a C bet of 350,000. Action on Vogelsang. How much do you have behind? 
Look, he's gonna want to get more chips in the middle while he knows he has the best hand, and also he wants coffee-flavored coffee! Oh no, the Dennis Leary references are back. It's a raise to 850,000. I'm on. Simple shoves. I call. And gets called. I'm on a draw. Roger, don't educate the fish. He's at risk and behind. He's got seven outs. That's not good. Those two overs aren't going to be worth much. Good luck. I like Roger Sipple. He is real people. Oh my goodness, is oh. that right? Walking on water, Roger. Real people. Nice, man. Nice, hey, man. <laughs> hey, you know, I thought you needed one good suck out to win this tournament, but it's apparently fine. you need two. You need two, <laughs> at least. Maybe three. Maybe three. We'll see. I mean, I would have played it the same. You need to. If you had you dumped a little slower, out. I'd have been back at the room and, you know, you could have had the chips. <laughs> Classic Roger. He doubles up through Christoph Vogel saying, now playing a stack of 4.36 million. I've been trying to sort of throw people off and not let people know my real background because then they'll play me differently. I tried to assert that I managed the Burger King at the San Carlos Airport in California, but that probably wouldn't be too convincing here for the super high roller. I actually have been running high-tech companies in Silicon Valley for the last 30 or 40 years. I think because of who I am and how I present myself, my age and how I dress, there will be assumptions made about how I play, and I think that's great. As I looked around the final table, it did occur to me that I've been playing poker probably double the number of years the average player has been alive. You know, I don't have that many years left, so I, <laughs> I always play to win. It's a, a pretty much all or nothing approach. I'd love to have the title. Mostly I'm trying to convince the world, but mostly myself, that I'm a world-class athlete. I mean, poker. It's a sport, so if I win a super high roller against all these top world-class pros from all around the world, I'm obviously a world-class athlete. And at 59, I think it's my last shot. I'm not gonna do it in figure skating or uh, ski jumping or anything like that, so I got it. Well, Roger did name the big three sports, figure skating, ski jumping, and poker. He actually won one of these big buying events at Aria in Vegas, so he should not be underestimated. He's raising from the cutoff here with Jack Eight of Diamonds. Vogel sang in the big blind as Ace Five offsuit. And shorthanded, I think you kind of got to defend, but proceed with caution, the ref. He defends. So 530,000 in the middle as we go to the flop, which gives Sipple second pair and a couple of backdoor draws. Vogel saying with a gut shot, he checks. I don't think Sipple has to bet this, but he could fold out some hands with decent equity. Looks like he will continue. And he continues pretty big, 400,000. That is quite big. Vogel saying faults. Nice hand, Roger. Thanks. And we have a new chip leader, Roger Sipple in command. Oh, I thought it was Roger. He sits at the top of the leaderboard with 4.8 million. Sorel Mitzi has dropped down into third place. And Christoph Vogel saying is the short stack with 16 big blinds. Danger zone. We're still playing 40-80. O'Dwyer has 8-10 of clubs. Ooh, we like this hand in the cutoff. He raises to 180,000. Sipple on the button, passes. Kenny in the small blind. Also folds. Mitzi in the big blind. That's Queen 8. It's Domination Nation, and the president likes to wear some wacky beads. Mitzi calls. 
O'Dwyer in position with the betting lead. And he's flopped a flush. Wow, these guys are hitting more flushes than Snoop Dogg's entourage when the cops show up. Mitzi with a draw to a better flush. It's been checked to O'Dwyer. He continues for 200k, so what does Mitzi do? Sorrell's hand is behind, but it's not bad by any means. This looks like a race. Mitzi makes it 505,000. He's hoping Steve is just c-betting, but he's not. He's both value betting and semi-bluffing. He's got a straight flush draw. Oh. Oh, Dwyer calls. Playing it a little slow, hoping to trap against a big club, which is what Sorrell's got. 1.46 million in the middle as we go to the turn, which is the five of diamonds pairing the board. And part of the reason Steve may just call the flop is to give Sorrell the chance to bluff the turn. Sorrell slows down. He checks. So Steve's going to do some more betting. 575,000. Sorrell even more likely to be drawing dead now. He faults. These guys are good. O'Dwyer chips up to 3.2 million. With that hand, he moves ahead of Sorel Mitzi, who now sits in fourth place after starting the day as chip leader. Hey, Mitzi, you not so fine. Hey, Mitzi. Roger Seppel, the only amateur at this final table, will be first to speak here. He has Ace Queen. Roger Dodger getting hit in the face with the deck. White chips are 100k, greens are 25k, and the blues are 5k. So Sipple opens to 220,000. Crystal Fogelsang has tens in the small blind. I don't want to give this away completely, but I'm going to go ahead and start lacing up my shoes. Fogelsang has 1.1 million, roughly 14 big blinds. Well, that is most of his stack. This is a virtual all-in. Not all-in, though. Huh. And how much is behind? I can't tell the green chips from the blue chips from there. 200 and 300,000. Oh, OK. All right, so those are both blue stacks, right? OK. All right. Thanks. All right, I'm all-in. Now they're all in, and it is a race. Like a window seat versus the aisle, one of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. Fair fight. Hey, I've got a good suck-out record so far in this tournament. Yeah, I'm ahead again, slightly. I know, it's your curse, buddy. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to be your nemesis like this. Uh-oh. Oh, Barely, he missed. Yeah, that's a miss. Nothing gets by this guy. Give me a jack and then give him his set. Wouldn't that give Kristoff a full house? Shh, 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 we've all done it. So, Vogel saying just needs to dodge an ace or a queen to survive. It's a queen! <laughs> he calls it. Oh, yep. yep. <laughs> you are my man. <laughs> Vogel sings out. Good game. <laughs> Good game, Ben. And we're down to four. <laughs> nice hey, play nice with playing you. with you. Well played. Thank you. <laughs> Good call, buddy. <laughs> All right. All right. I felt it. I felt <laughs> it. <laughs> Have they even met before? Vogel saying walks away with more than half a million dollars. May all your troubles be forgot. Christoph Old Vogel sang line, I need to quit booze. I mean, you're winning the 90-10s and the 80-20s. The 50-50s are easy. <laughs> <laughs> Roger Sipple extends his chip lead. Well, you could win a package to the next PCA. Check out the qualifying tournaments at PokerStars.com.
Here in the Bahamas, the PokerStars.com PCA Super High Roller final table has been reduced to four players. The three pros have made it this far before, but it's the amateur, Roger Sippel, who currently leads them all. I did cash in the first 100K that I played, but I was the bubble boy in 100Ks like three or four times in a row. So uh, I kind of need this one to <laughs> make up for some of that. And right after the tech guy tells us he's stuck in super high rollers, I would like to remind you to download the Play Along app. You're welcome, Silicon Valley. Yep, not too late to join in the fun as the blinds go up to 50,000, 100,000 with a 10,000 ante. Bryn Kenny with Ace Jack suited on the button. Ooh, baby. Raises to 215K. Deuces for Sorel Mitzi in the small blind. Race number two happening presently. He's the short stack at the table. Mullen. And he shoves. O'Dwyer in the big blind. Passes. I call. And we're flipping. I'm ahead. Like mints versus gum. But you're Bryn Kenny. <laughs> it's a race Mitzi needs to win. Good luck, buddy. Good luck. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. Yeah, of course. Now, what do you mean, then? The flop is 10-6-4. Deuces are holding. <laughs> Deuces. The turn card is a queen. I need the sweat. I don't mind the sweat. I'm just... Keep it clean now. Mitzi's out if an ace, king, or jack hits the river. Boom. It's a king. There it is. Good game, game, buddy. And Mitzi is eliminated. That was not clean. Not clean at all. GG. Good game, man. Good game. Nice hand. Three in a row, buddy. Good playing, buddy. That's not fair. Thank you. All right. Good luck, man. Thanks. See you later. Yep. Sorrell now has a third and a fourth in super high rollers. Ooh. Ooh, nice river card. Saw him look at me, and I knew it was over for him. Yeah, I saw it before anybody. Yeah. I don't look at the river card ever. I just look at the other player. I like. Yeah, that I love better. the uh, like. The know that you won based on the pain on their face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it. That's what he did. So, oh, that's mine. <laughs> I'm making a pain face right now. You just can't see it. Poor Sorrell. When you come in with the chip lead and you bust out in fourth, uh, you can't help but be a little disappointed. But I think I played pretty well with the exception of one hand. And uh, you can't really take what, what happens at the table personally. Uh, the hand played itself, and I'm just going to move on to the next one. So three-handed now. Sipple still the big stack. But Kenny and O'Dwyer aren't that far behind. Lions are still 5,100. Bryn has folded his button. Steve's got kings in the small blind. Beautiful. Steve recently won a super high roller event in Macau for the equivalent of $1.8 million. Father time. So he raises, and Sipple's got queens in the big. More beautiful herb for Steve. That's a three bet to 650,000. I think Steve expects Roger to be super strong here a lot. Looks like he's counting out a four bet. 1.25 million. And I sure don't see how Sipple can fold. He has got all the chips. Mullen. He shoves. And Steve calls. Damn. O'Dwyer is ahead, but at risk. And Sipple is the self-proclaimed suckout master. Steve's a worrier. A safe lot for O'Dwyer. He's now a nine-to-one favorite. Cards are no good. Except for the one in here, Roger. Except for the one in here. A black paint. <laughs> Just two cards for Steve to fade on the river. It's not a queen. O'Dwyer wins the pot. Nice hand. Thanks. Pretty gross score. Grosser than a hot tub during spring break. Steve O'Dwyer gets a big double up. 
and takes the chip lead from Roger Sippel. I've played 11 super high rollers now. I'm running pretty well in them. That's part of the reason why I'm still playing them. The tournament in Macau was a lot of fun, really tough players, a lot of really fun amateurs to play with. It was a good mix and the highest stakes tournament I'd ever played, so it was nice to win that. I was feeling pretty down prior to Macau. I hadn't been playing that well, and everything went right for me in that tournament. And yeah, I've felt pretty great since then. It feels great to make this final table. I think momentum and confidence is a big thing, something people don't think about maybe as often as they should in poker. To start off the year with a win would be great. I'd put me in a good position for player of the year. It's a long way away, but at least it would incentivize me to play a lot more in 2015 than I already planned to play. Steve O'Dwyer with the Macau Cacao. We're gonna sweat with Steve on this hand and play it from Mr. O'Dwyer's point of view. Steve O, sweat your cards. It's his small blind. Deuce four. Yeah, let's see a flop with these. He calls. No raise from Roger. He checks his option. We're probably behind. Well, Steve flops bottom pair. Plus, he has a couple of backdoor draws working for him. A pair is going to be the best hand most of the time. He checks the action, and Roger Sipple bets 175,000. We've got the perfect hand to check call with. Odoir does call. And just to annoy Joe, I'm going to say that Steve has improved to two pair. <laughs> Technically, you are not wrong. And we are hoping Roger checks behind, but it doesn't look like he's going to. Yeah, it looks like another bet's coming. But the way he's looking so concerned makes me think he could have a monster here. 550,000. Steve's probably going to call again. There is a pretty small range of hands Roger could have that are value hands. Steve does call, and we have a pot of 1.68 million. A nine on the river. Steve checks for a third time. Pretty passive line. And Roger shoves for 2.2 million. It's an overbet. How does Steve O'Dwyer respond to this? I'm going to remind everyone, Monster is what I think Roger has here. He is repping a very narrow range, but I think he's got it this time. How often is he bluffing here? Hero call. Oh, got him. That is a monster. I can't beat a full house. I was hoping you couldn't beat a full house. I can't beat much of anything, but... <laughs> that's, that's a pretty bad call. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you gotta have a really strong hand to go bet, bet, chub. So, <laughs> you know, hard. I could have done that. I, I would usually do that with a pair, but I could have done it with just a pair. Or yeah. Nice end. Thank you. Steve could not beat a pair. Roger may have doubled up, but Steve O'Dwyer is still the chip leader as the blinds go up to 60,000, 120,000 with a 20,000 ante. Everything is coming up simple except for his name and my spell check. That just comes up with a red line. He's got Jack 10 on the button. Who's he going to get with this one? He raises to 300,000. Bryn Kenny has king-queen suited. Queen suited, he is not folding this. Does he call or raise? All in. He shoves. O'Dwyer is in the big blind with tens. Oh boy. Never count. Roughly. Roughly, it's about 3.6. Well, Dwyer can't fold either. Mullen. 
He reshoves. Isolation nation. Roger Sipple faults. Pocket tens. Flip. We're off to the races again. King Queen suited. Like noodles versus rice, one of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. Kenny, the player at risk. Kenny, the player who needs to connect. Well, no high cards and all red. Ten's looking real good. The turn card is an ace. Kenny with six outs. For Moose, though. No king or queen. Good game. Nice, was nice playing, playing with you. See you around. Another bronze for Bren. Good game, buddy. Which means we're heads up. And it's almost time to party in the Bahamas. We're heads up for the PokerStars.com PCA Super High Roller title, where the winner will receive nearly $1.9 million. Steve O'Dwyer has roughly a three to one chip lead over Roger Sipple, but the American businessman plans to use his life experience to overcome the deficit. I've seen just about everything in the world there is to see, especially when it comes to people and their behaviors and how they make decisions. But I think that's what gives me some advantage I've got. Other than that, the pros have a lot of advantages on me. Roger, this tournament's the first time I've ever played with him. I have some friends that kind of gave me a little bit of uh, an idea of how he played, but even then, they were like, we're not really sure how he's gonna approach this final table. So he's been a bit of a wild card. I'm just gonna try to take it slow and see if I can get a better feel for how he plays. Simple plays all right, but he connects with more flops than an easily bought movie critic. Right now, he's got 27 big blinds. Steve has 111 bigs. He's raising his button with king six off. Roger with 10 deuce of spades. Reminder, this is heads up, so most hands are playable, including these two. Oh. Roger defends. Roughly 60-40 as we go to the flop. And Sipple has paired his deuce. Problem is, now he's got to stick around with it. Oh. Looks like he's going to lead. 300,000. O'Dwyer with king high calls. And leading there is a little out of the ordinary, and I think it speaks volumes about Sipple's hand. An eight on the turn. Sipple now an 86% favorite. Is he going to bet again? No, he checks. And Steve O'Dwyer checks behind. Jack on the river. So Sipple has the best hand with bottom pair. Action's been checked to O'Dwyer. Is he going to take the showdown value? Sipple has taken an odd line for a hand that was supposed to be value on the flop. And I think Steve sniffed out something he can maybe make fold. 600,000. Roughly half the pot. Snapped off. King high. I, there it is. High. Steve could not make him fold. It's the first time I've done that in a long time. <laughs> O'Dwyer still has a big chip lead over Sipple. Both players had to re-enter this tournament after busting early on. So they're in for 200 grand apiece. Rogers on the button in the small blind. Queen seven. He raises to 260,000. 8-10 for O'Dwyer. Yes and yes. He calls. Roger, the marginal favorite as we head to the flop. Steve now in front with second pair. Perfect hand to check call with. Here comes a continuation bet from Roger, 450,000. Steve's not folding second pair, and he's not raising second pair. Sure enough, he calls. See if Sipple just shuts down now. 
Nearly one and a half million in the middle. It's a jack on the turn. Roger now has a straight draw. Action's been checked to him for a second time. And this is a pretty good card for Roger to bet again. I'm all in. And bet he does everything he's got. Now this does look a lot like a draw, but Steve may be a little snake bit from the last all in he called. Tough for O'Dwyer to know he's a three to one favorite. O'Dwyer folds. Sipple chips up to nearly 5.2 million. It is getting a tidbit Sipley in here. And I like it. Sipley the best. And he's getting Steve O'Dwyer to smile. Oh, what a time to be alive. O'Dwyer first to act here. Queen four off. That's a raise. A7 suited for Sipple. He defends. Okay. Okay. The flop gives O'Dwyer top pair. Now let's see if Steve can do some damage with a hand he can be a little more confident in. Roger checks. Steve does not continue. He checks behind. Steve, I think, wants Sipple to barrel into him on the turn and maybe the river. On the board pairs on the turn, Steve now a huge favorite. Sipple checks a second time. Not barreling. So a delayed C bet from O'Dwyer, 300,000. Sipple with just ace high calls. Pretty quick call with just ace high and no draw, but I think it's okay. Another eight on the river. O'Dwyer now with a full house. Actions on Sipple. He checks for a third time. If Roger thought he could have the best hand before, he might still think that now. Nearly 1.2 million in the pot. O'Dwyer going for value. How much is that? 750. In general, this river card's a really bad card to bluff on, so I don't think Steve's gonna be bluffing very often here. Especially once he gets called on the turn. Sipple considering a hero call. I have a queen. E. Nice hand. Nice tiny bet sizing by Steve, too. Knew how to rope in A's high like throwing a rubber band around a greasy ponytail. O'Dwyer back up over 12 million. Sipple hovering around the 4 million mark. And that means that Steve O'Dwyer has re-established a 3-to-1 lead over his opponent as the blinds go up to 80,000, with a 20k ante. Jack-10 for Roger. The old two-handed peel to go with it. Don't see much of that these days. I'm for it. He's raising from the button. 450,000. Ace 10 for Steve O'Dwyer. Uh-oh, Steve's doing the dominance dance. He calls. He's a kind of slow. The flop is queen 8-8. Eight, eight. It's a gut shot for Sipple. O'Dwyer still ahead with ace high. O'Dwyer's playing in flow. He's checked the action to Sipple. And Steve can now call a lot of C-bets because it's a smaller pot. That's a chunky C-bet from Roger, 750k. And I don't think Roger's going to have much here very often. O'Dwyer calls. Pot of 2.4 million. The turn card is a deuce, it changes nothing. Can Roger dump? Nope. Check, check on the turn. The river card? A three. It's a brick. Sipple misses its draw. Ace high is the best hand. O'Dwyer checks for a third time. I'm all in. A 
That simple bluff shoves the river. Roger. Roger, what are you doing to me? This is really tricky. Last time Raj did this, he was stronger than the drinks at the players' party. But this is not how most players are going to play their bluffs. And that is certainly the kind of thing a player of Steve O'Dwyer's caliber is going to notice. We can see he has the best hand. A lot of players are going to fold in this spot, and if Steve does fold, he'll still have a two-to-one chip lead over Roger. But considering he has the best hand, if he heroes with ace high, he will win the tournament. I think ten is pretty good. Father time is going to need some time. Good call. He calls! It's over. Good call. Incredible call. It's high. With that hand, Steve O'Dwyer wins! <laughs> wow. I didn't have you on a bear and you didn't have one. I didn't think you were going to make that I was just, call. I was worried I had a 10 that blocked some of your, your gut shots. So. <laughs> Good call. Thank you. And nice job. Thank you. You too. Oh, man. <laughs> Sipple, I love you. He gets more than 1.3 million for his second place finish, while Steve O'Dwyer cashes for nearly 1.9 million and adds a super high roller title to his EPT main event title. Steve O'Dwyer, uh, 18 months ago when you won the EPT grand final and I tried to ask you how you felt, you said there are no words. All you could do was hug me. Do you think that you have a few words now? How do you feel now? Um, I feel pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I don't really ever have many words, no matter what, so... I don't know. I won. That's fun. You're feeling something in there, I hope. Yeah, I feel pretty nice, but, like, it's kind of important when you're playing these tournaments, like, no matter what happens, to keep your emotions in check, so... I'm, I'm very excited that I won, but it might not look like it, but I'm pretty happy. All right, Steve, well, can I get another hug now? Of course. Yes! Bring it in for the real thing. Thank you. All right, everybody, let's get a big round of applause for PCA 2015 Super High Roller Champion, Steve O'Dwyer. O'Dwyer rules. To start the year this way is pretty fantastic. I'm you know, very happy with the result. The only way it could have been better if I was in for one bullet instead of two. The final hand heads up. He goes all in for slightly over pot. Wasn't too happy that I had a 10 in my hand because that blocks a lot of the potential gut shots. Once I thought it over, I just kind of felt like I had to call. Ace high. Good call. I was pretty happy I made the call. I'm going to play the main event tomorrow. I'm very excited about that. This is one of the best main events of the year. I feel great. It's nice to win these things. Join us next time for full coverage of the 2015 PCA main event as the stars strut their stuff.